Now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Misty Uplink. Uh, I'm Chris Meyer. I'm the head of developer experience here at Misty. I'm joined by my colleagues, colleagues Ben and Justin, uh, who are distributed across the country. Um, ben, you're in Washington right now. You're not traveling. Nope. And Justin, you've been traveling like a, like a madman. Up and down the California coast. Yeah. So uh, over the last few weeks, if you joined us uh, when I was in Austin for developer week, uh, Wu then promptly went over to the Bay Area for a number of events. Wu, you want to talk about uh, what, what happened there just briefly? Yes. Yeah, I went over to Wired25. For those of you who are following our Twitter, if you're not, feel free to follow us on, at Misty Robotics. We had Wired25. It was organized by Wired, the magazine. We had a booth. We did a few workshops, one of which was a kids' workshop. Uh, went really well. Another one was for adults and, um, and showed Misty off. So that was really cool. We were also in San Francisco for an IoT Pioneers event where we demonstrated Misty to a couple of hardware developers. So that went really well. And most recently, this Sunday, we were in Palo Alto at a library uh, where one of our developers, Dan, actually gave a workshop to about 10 kids, uh, Python, teaching them Python how to program Misty. It's important to note that that was a, uh, you know, a community developer, not a Misty employee that was giving that workshop. So that's really cool. Um, wasn't she earlier the week before giving a presentation that included Misty? Yes, uh, at Wired, she came down to help out. And there's a big conference in Monterey at, at the beginning, I think it was in the beginning of November, where she, were, she was actually at the Internet Librarian Conference and she gave a presentation on using Misty to teach uh, kids how to program. That's awesome. Very cool. So it's, it's going to be a, an event packed uh, Q4 for us here at Misty. You know, we've already had a number of events, um, and for those of you following along, we had Scott Hanselman use Misty in in his presentation not not uh, less than 12 hours ago, yeah. less than eight hours ago. But that was uh, we'll, we'll be sharing some of the video of that here soon over the next few days. But it's really cool to see you know not only you guys as users and and Misty. Uh, supporters start to be engaged more and more. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing more of that. Um, so as the normal routine here, we're gonna start things out with talking about the, the most recent release. This is a, a, an interesting release in that we are really laying the groundwork for our C Sharp SDK, which is going to be released here in the month of December. Um, for those of you in the Bay Area, we're going to have a little workshop um, at the Microsoft Reactor, and we can uh, towards the end of this we'll share all of the all of the links for these events. Um, but that's really one of the biggest components of this particular update. It's not quite ready yet, but uh, it, it, again, a lot of work has gone into it. But for those of you over the next twelve hours, you're going to see a number of bug fixes. Uh, primarily around anyone that has noticed an underexposed image if you use the take picture. Um, that was caused by an issue when you were running face uh, detection or face recognition in tandem with some of the take picture calls. The camera itself was underexposing the image, which has been resolved. So that's, that's a really cool thing that, uh, you know, when we start to use a lot of these sensors in tandem, some of these strange behaviors pop up, and this is how we get better. So uh, a good bug fix there. Um, some of you might have noticed that Misty's head has been moving slower since the last release in October. So uh, with this update over the next uh, 12 to 48 hours, I believe the propagation time is, you'll notice that Misty's head is gonna start moving much faster um, than what it was doing previously. So all good things uh, coming through that. Now there is one unfortunate update for anybody that's using uh, move head or move head degrees there is a slight change in the endpoint itself so if you have skills that are making use of the move the move head you know move head degrees move head radians or just the the general move head endpoint 
there are some potentially breaking changes for any skills that utilize those. Um, we'll send out the release notes to everybody here shortly. And again, everything that I'm talking about here is going to be in the community forum. So be sure to check that out. Um, uh, and again, if you have any questions or you want me to articulate any part of this, be sure to use that ask question down at the bottom of, of your screen there. Uh, Crowdcast does a great job of enabling us to make sure to get all those questions answered uh, sequentially. So don't hesitate to use that. Chris, just a quick point on the uh, breaking changes. Those actually won't come down with the latest release, but will be in a release in mid-December. Um, we are just letting people know about those uh, ahead of time because that's a good practice, uh, not uh, letting people that, you know, know once their robot is, uh, is changed, but uh, with the advance notice. So December 17th, we expect that change to happen. Excellent. So uh, apologies, it will not break this release in the next, uh, next day or two. So uh, good stuff. Thanks, Ben. Yep. So again, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them those into the, uh, the ask question area down at the bottom. Um, it looks like Mike, what skill is currently running your Misty? He seems to be gazing longingly around the room. So this is uh, one of our uh, capabilities demonstrations that I've set up on my robot to run on startup. Um, for anybody that's interested in how to do that, it's just an element in the JSON file that is attached or associated with any of your any of your skills. Um, so again, in my case, uh, what's running is, and I can actually verify by taking a look at my skill runner here. Yeah, is our, is our capabilities demo. So we use this one uh, to run a variety of different skills, uh, you know, when we're out at conferences and that type of thing. If you want a, a, a walkthrough of that later, be sure to request it. <laughs> so they, I just decided to answer that question, Michael, just because I saw it in the chat there, but uh, that, ask a question down at the bottom is a great place to make sure that we get everything answered in line here. Um, yeah, no problem. So what I wanted to dig into tonight is audio localization. So because Misty has a microphone array on, on the top of her head, that enables a really interesting interaction um, that Misty is aware of where a speaker is located relative to her position, uh, and as well as some ambient noise and some what we've broken out into sectors. And so if you're interested in any part of this, like the best place to get started is the is the command center. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and kind of show you what we're what we're looking at here. Ben, if you can do me the favor of highlighting that there, let me know if if and when you can share my screen see my screen. Ben, can you see it? Um, I see just you. Okay. Well, here we go. Share screen. I'm going to share that. And it looks like it's taking a minute to, to select it. That's very odd. Um, while, while Chris is getting that going, I can make an announcement too, uh, because um, not only are we releasing new software, we're actually shipping more robots out there. I don't know if everyone on the call has a robot yet um, or is waiting for it. Uh, all US and Canadian um, pre-orders should be fulfilled by certainly this time next month. We expect that to be actually much sooner, uh, even with the matte black robots. Um, International uh, orders are um, beginning to ship um, in just a few weeks. Uh, and the backpacks, the Arduino powered backpacks are going to be um, shipping in starting in mid December. Uh, some of them probably will ship into um, January. So if you're really hoping to get it by Christmas, we apologize. Many of you will, but some of you may not. So that is the uh, update there. Chris has not only uh, managed to uh, not share his screen, he, we also lost his video, so. Yeah, well, I, I decided that for whatever reason, I'm not able to select my screen here. Mm. 
so this could be an interesting uh, demonstration. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So you so don't have the little share screen icon at the top of your camera thing. I do actually. So, but for whatever reason, it's not actually sharing my screen. Oh, there we go. Nope. No. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, is there a? Uh, well, that's not going to work. Um, I was going to say, could I share something um, while you walk through it? Let me try one other thing. Uh, so, in in essence, what's going on is it looks like it's failing to show any of my uh, any of my application screens, my entire screen. I would blame it on your uh, your upgrade to um, Catalina, but I am also upgraded, and it appears like I can share my screen. Cool. Well, uh, Ben, do you want to share your screen and just go to uh, Command Center? OK. Hmm. Application window. And Ben, you are you are completely right. It is uh, it is a Catalina issue. So for those of you using a, a Mac machine, when you upgrade to Catalina, you have to re-enable any sort of app permissions that that might utilize microphone or other ones. And in this case, because it's trying to access my screen, good stuff. Um, so Ben, I uh, I got cocky. You got cocky. It doesn't work uh, for you. It, uh, it, I said share screen, and it uh, it attempted it. Cool, but um, it's not working. So I've got I've got a, a temporary solution. Ben, I'm going to drop off for just a second, and then in less than a minute, we will be sharing my screen and walking through audio localization. All right. Uh, so Ben, if you want to uh, sing and dance, sing and dance. Uh, I'm, I'm I'll be right back. All right. Um, could be a good time to uh, walk through some upcoming events. Could also be a time to take questions. We did we did have one question um, from Alan, but it seems like a little bit more of a troubleshooting question. Um, so it uh, looks like uh, Justin answered that, um, and maybe we'll dig in with him. Uh, certainly post more things here, but um, a little highlight of where we're going next week. Uh, well, is it not, not quite next week, but basically um, December 3rd, we were doing a uh, an event at the Microsoft Reactor. Uh, it's basically our release party for the .NET uh, SDK. Um, the next day, we're going to be at the Waffle.js meetup. Um, and uh, then we will uh, be doing bots and beer in Silicon Valley. Um, and then on the 5th, we're uh, meeting with the San Francisco game devs who will uh, you know, hang out. And we're going to uh, talk about Misty as a real world non-player character or playable character uh, in, uh, in game parlance. And, and, and there's also a, uh, on December 12th, we're having a party at Solderworks. And everyone who is in the area or not traveling uh, is invited to that. There'll be um, some revelry and music and whatnot. But look, we have Chris back, and he yeah. has a screen to share. Yes. I just got to remember. Ah, there we go. All right. So good things comes to those who debug, I suppose. <laughs> um, so everybody should be able to see my screen here. Uh, I am. Chris, why don't you give it a couple pluses? Oh yeah. Thanks. How's that look, Ben? Looks good. So what what I'm what I'm navigating to is our command center. So anybody uh, that has watched any previous uplink knows that we love starting with this as the as the foundation for uh, most of our getting started. So. For context, the command center will wrap all of the functionality up into a nice page that you can play with, uh, you know, the sensors, the the streams, the data, uh, in in kind of a, a click and go interface. So, in this case, because we're talking about audio localization, we have this nice visualization um, with audio 
with, with the audio data that's coming off of your robot. So uh, this might be slightly clipped in the video stream here, but what you're seeing is four pieces of data. You're seeing the speaker, that is that kind of cyan uh, bluish green line. Um, you're seeing noise, which is that, uh, what is it, magenta vector. And then you're seeing the radar activity, which is, which I'll, I'll walk through here in a moment. But this kind of gives you an idea. Uh, you know, if you remember, Misty is actually facing away from me, and I'm over her right shoulder as I, as I'm talking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate Misty slightly and show that as I'm talking, the vector relative to Misty is changing. Um, so now Misty's looking at me, and you can see that that speaker. Uh, area is, is uh, straightforward. Um, and so this is the best way to start to understand how these things come through, understand the sensitivity of the of the microphone array. You'll see that that noise sample is, is kind of all over. Um, and in this case, it's filtering out my voice from, uh, you know, other ambient noises. And, and Jonathan might be able to offer a little bit more information in the chat area, but I think it samples at uh, 20 hertz. Is that 50, 50 milliseconds, if I'm not, if I'm not uh, incorrect? But it samples very, very fast. Um, so again, this is, this is kind of getting a feel for how this sensor works. Now, the next step in our, in our uh, discovery of, of audio localization is around the coordinate system of, of Misty herself. So what I'm looking at here is just docs.mistyrobotics.com. And then in, in the Misty 2 overview, we have a section called coordinate system and movement ranges. So if you're ever confused as to why negative pitch makes Misty's head look up, this is, this is the place to look. Um, and you'll notice here that we have this coordinate system and movement ranges PDF. And, and Jonathan or Wu, if you guys can go ahead and add that to the chat here. This is extremely useful uh, to just have as a reference, print it out, hang it up, frame it um, near your robot. Um, because this is something that I constantly kind of uh, utilize in my, in my own skill building to remember, oh, okay, what, what, what are the ranges here? What is positive, negative? Um, where are we looking? And so in regards to audio localization, uh, Ben, can you see that all right? Yeah, you could give it a, you could give it a little bit, but um, it's pretty good. So in this case, you'll notice that relative to Misty, her right arm is negative 90, and her left arm is positive 90. So as I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip back, so keep this in mind. So zero is forward, Negative 90 is left arm, or sorry, positive 90 is left arm, negative 90 is right arm. And so here I am looking at Misty, and it's, it's relatively close to, to zero. Um, you know, it looks like it's slightly uh, over her right, or over her left arm relative to the robot. And this is something that is a little counterintuitive, um, which is why we kind of created this uh, this resource for you. So that is the, the, the foundational understanding of how audio localization works. Now I'm gonna dig into a little bit of the sample code. Um, if you navigate to our Misty community GitHub repository, just github.com slash Misty community, we have a, a sample code repository and within the sample code repository, we have the, the JavaScript SDK code samples. Now I'm using JavaScript today just because uh, we are using sensor streams. I didn't want to introduce latency if, by using WebSockets and some of the, this other stuff that I wanted it to react very, very quickly. So that's, that's part of the reason why I'm gonna walk through the JavaScript stuff today. But if you, if you navigate to that JavaScript SDK code samples and then go to the audio localization folder, this is what we're gonna be walking through. So like all of our skills, we have our .js file and our .json file, which is our meta file. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up those in my, um, 
Visual Studio Code editor. Now you can use any editor here. We just recommend Visual Studio Code because one, we have an extension that makes the upload easier, and two, it's just a really nice editor. Um, so in this case, I'm lo looking at the audio localization.js. So for those of you that remember, for sensors that have a lot of information coming through, what we do is we register uh, to events. And in, in the other element of registering to events is let the robot know which properties of those events you really care about. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a little bit clearer, uh, but first I wanna walk through the, the foundations of this example skill. Um, like any skill, we start from, from top okay, to bottom. So give that a few uh, increases in size too, thanks. Thanks, thanks Ben. Um, so this is, this is the very, I'm gonna stop scrolling so it's, it's not jerking all over the place. We recommend with any skill to, to set some foundational movements. What happens a lot of the time is like if you're if you're doing different things and you start and stop your robot that there's there's cases where your head or neck or pitch roll and yaw is going to be in different positions. In this case, the very first thing we do is we set kind of a neutral head position. Uh, so if you wanted to see what this looks like, and what I'm using here is the Visual Studio Code extension, which pulls up the the proper endpoints. So I'm, I'm using move head degrees. And if you if you roll over the actual thing, it'll pre-populate the fields themselves. And I forget, let me see here. There we go. So I just hit control space on my on my laptop here. And I, as I look at move head degrees, it, it will automatically pop up the documentation for that endpoint itself. So we're just setting it pitch, roll, yaw, and then a velocity value. So negative 15, which is 15 degrees up, uh, setting a neutral roll and yaw value, as well as an intermediate velocity to, to move in that direction. And here's, here's the, the meat and potatoes of what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna use a function register, local, register audio localization, which will then add the return property that I mentioned earlier. So, I was actually trying something out earlier. In the, in the skill itself, there's this degree of arrival speech. So this is going to be what we're seeing in this visualization. The voice, the speaker vector that's showing up in, in uh, uh, blue-green here. So if we go back to the code, that's what, that's what this line is gonna do. It's gonna say, I want to register the event sound in, and I want the value degree of arrival speech. And then this register event call is actually what's going to be telling the robot that we want to take into account the return properties that we set above, and also registering the callback for this source track data message. Now this is the part where I actually get a little confused myself. Um, in the documentation, let's let's navigate here. Ben, you can still see my screen, right? Yeah. I'm gonna zoom in. Anytime that you're dealing with events, and this is an event-driven example uh, piece of code, at the bottom of the reference area, there's this section called event types. Now I know that, uh, we've had a few people be a little confused as to where they can find the information of what data is coming back from the robot depending on these, these event types that, that you're connecting to. Um, and in this case, because we're talking about audio localization, the, the relevant event type is source track data message. So if, as you navigate to the documentation there, this outlines all of the available information that is gonna come off of the robot. I know that the name might be a little uh, confusing because you would expect something with sound or speaker or anything like that. Um, and, and if you have recommendations on what you'd like to call it, we're definitely open to that. Please jump in the community forums and let us know. But for now, source track data message is the event that you wanna to register to in order to get any sort of localization data. Now, in the return property, we said degree of arrival speech. 
in the event area, you'll notice the degree of arrival speech will have a value between zero and 360 degrees to indicate the value relative to Misty, where she detected the loudest voice. Now, the other things that you could put in that uh, add property value is things like voice activity polar, the voice activity sectors, uh, which if we go back to our reference, you'll see that the sector zero is in front, sector two, sector two, or sector three are the quadrants relative to the robot that you, you can subscribe to. And I can show you what that looks like here in a moment as well. But I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that in the events section is where you find all this information for the response values and how you subscribe to the things that you actually care about. So because what we are gonna discuss here is the degree of arrival speech, that's what we have in the piece of sample code here. So I'm adding the return property, I'm registering to the proper event, which is source track data information, and I'm setting the debounce to 100. So this, this means that the sound in will pull at 100 milliseconds and then give us uh, the data here. And for what I, what I was messing around with, what I want to show first is just the value of that degree of arrival for audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and, and let's, let's take a look at what this actually does. So I'm uploading, I'm using the extension to do this. Uh, you can't see my robot, but Misty is setting her head movement. And if we navigate back to our skill runner, what we're gonna see here is if I open up the JavaScript console, my preference is just right click, do inspect, then go over to the console itself. Um, I'm gonna stop it and rerun it here so that way we can see it. We have our audio localization skill. I'm gonna click start. And here we are. Every 100 milliseconds, I'm going to get an event. And if I rotate Misty around, you'll see as I'm speaking, that degree will change. Cool, yay, successful demonstration of a basic skill. <laughs> um, but let's look at something slightly different. So in this case, cool, I got, a, I got a degree value. And for context, what's going on is we're changing the LED, we're gonna let the skill run for 10 seconds, and then we're gonna just stop the skill, turn off an LED, and unregister all events. So this is intended to give you a very short start-stop uh, skill to see programmatically what data is coming off of your robot. Now, before I was talking about how to change what return property you actually want to look in, in your callback. So that's where I'm going to comment out the degree of arrival speech and then re-add the voice activity sectors. So what are we talking about? Well, let's look at the documentation. Voice activity sectors is an array of four Boolean elements that indicate whether Misty has detected voice in a particular sector. So it's gonna look like this. This here is an example. If I didn't add the return property value, what would come back from the robot uh, outright? And what we're gonna see is this activity sectors, sector zero, sector one, sector two, sector three, because we are a zero index house here. <laughs> Hey, Chris. Yeah. We've got a question from the, uh, the audience, uh, yeah. and it relates to this. Um, Scott asks, are there any audio sectors that are more accurate uh, than another? In other words, do you gain anything by trying to reorient Misty's head to get more accuracy uh, in a specific location? Now, that is an, an exceptionally good question, because I haven't tested that at all. Um, I, I do want to call out this voice activity polar. Uh, if you are interested in, in kind of testing that out, what this response value will give you is an array of, I think, 360 polar values relative to the activity in that zone. So if you think if you break it up into a bunch of different areas, every area would have, you'll see here, it's like, okay, there's an activity of 10 in one section and activity in zero in another. This is essentially what the voice activity sectors is doing for you. Um, and I haven't played with the sensitivity of it. So if you're, if you're interested in seeing like where Misty is most sensitive, 
definitely take a look at this voice activity polar and then just giving it a shot yourself, um, seeing what data you're getting off of that. Hey, uh, I, have an, I have a follow-up question. Um, there are actually five little uh, dots in Misty's head. Not all of them are microphones from though, what I understand. Do you know exactly where the microphones are placed inside? I, I don't. This is a, a, another very good question. You'll have to do some brain surgery. I, yeah, I, don't, I can't yeah. remember exactly. Oh, Jonathan has an image that can help, and he's going to post it because he's on top of shit. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, so we will have an answer shortly. It, it's, it's funny the amount of stuff that we've, we've discovered and done over time that really specific things like that just don't immediately pop to mind. So... Uh, Excellent way to uh, um, to kind of explore Misty's own sensitivity there. Uh, I, I do want to put a caveat in with this voice activity sector. So let, let's let's run it, and then I'll give my caveat. So I'm, I'm going to subscribe to voice activity sectors. My my code hasn't changed in that the the this additional result, the first thing that comes back, is related to this return property that we created. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to upload and run. I'm uploading the Misty. Your skill is started. I'm going to go back to my skill runner. And here we go. You'll see that this is probably hard to see when it's streaming like this. You'll see on one moment, all four of my sectors registered as true in that they have detected audio. And then other times, if I'm talking consistently, it will kind of ping pong between different sections that are that are hearing in this case, I suspect that it might be just a pause in between my voice and that I'm very close to Misty. So I'm actually activating all four of those sectors. So these are the types of things that go along with that, that discovery element. Uh, if you're farther away from the robot, that sector will most likely be much, much more accurate than if you have somebody close to the robot that is activating all of those microphones in the array. Um, and the other element, let me, let me go back to the documentation if I can kind of el illustrate. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. The degree of arrival speech is actually being filtered through the, uh, our system itself. So it will actually try to give you a more granular uh, response than, than it is going through the sectors. So kind of an interesting use case, depending on how you want the robot to react to sound. Um, let, me, let me see where I was at. So those, that is the, the most basic interaction with audio localization that you can have. The, the degree of arrival speech, the voice activity sectors, uh, the voice activity polar coordinates, if you want something that you do the processing in your own code. Um, the degree of arrival noise is essentially the same thing. And, and if we go back to our visualization, you'll see, you, you remember that it, it ping pongs around. It's, it's kind of just detecting whatever the noisiest area that's not going through the processing of a speaker. Now this opens up something kind of interesting. So I wanted to show this uh, before moving on and kind of uh, answering some questions. We have, let me, let me make this bigger here. Ben, can you see that all right? Yeah. This is a, a more complex skill that makes use of the speaker degree value and will move Misty's head relative to where she hears somebody talking to it. Um, I'm not gonna walk through the entire uh, skill, but the, the place to find it is actually in our prototype engineer's GitHub repository, um, which can be found. Uh, Jonathan or Wu, do you wanna add CP's Misty Skills repository? Uh, so for anybody- I'm already looking for something, I will- I will get that uh, for him, but yeah, everyone should follow CP because uh, he comes up with some crazy shit. So. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool to see the stuff that he comes up with. Actually, you know what? I can I can post it right here. Boom! There it is. Um, it, it, in C, so CP, this is this is kind of cutting and stuff stuff that we haven't really validated or, or made it into a more tutorialized uh, process. But if you go to example skills, in this case, it's advanced because there is some 
uh, vector calculations that are going on. There's the move to sound skill, uh, which is what we're looking at here. So uh, example skills, advanced move to sound. In this case, what, what CP has done is he's adding some uh, global variables, as it were, with the misty.get and misty.set uh, tools, endpoints, and then adding and unregistering from the audio localization stream at a certain rate. So that way, Misty has time to look at a certain vector relative to the robot. So something to check out. Uh, I'm definitely working on making this a little cleaner so I can walk through it uh, and, and give you guys a starting point to make it easy to add listening and reacting to sound as part of your skills. So that's that's all I had uh, for audio localization and, and some of the walkthrough stuff. I'm, I'm going back to my Crowdcast ask a question, react a question, answer a question area. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks Scott. It's it's one of those things where it's easy to, to follow along if you just see somebody do it once. So I'm hoping that that was, it was a lot of information, but I hope it was helpful. Justin, would you care to um, dive into Michael's question a little bit? Um, just about uh, audio localization, distinguishing, be distinguishing between uh, multiple speakers without seeing them? Yes, so uh, Michael, that's a great question. I assume what you're talking about is distinguishing, distinguishing, distinguishing between vo different voices. For example, Ben, myself, Justin, and Chris. Uh, county right now, the audio localization doesn't do that, but I believe there are external services on the web that can do that. In fact, I was just looking at Amazon Transcribe, and I think if you send the recording to them it's able to distinguish between different voices. Now, not try that, but uh, you can either use Amazon or Google's uh, voice recognition service, or I think Microsoft's, and I think each of them can distinguish between different voices. Although I'm not sure how you would train them, the model to do that. Yeah. We expect a lot of training type things to happen. We expect people to use Misty as a, you know, machine learning algorithm like feeder uh, of some sort, but yeah, that, that's an, a good question. Uh, new, yeah, another and, new and question. Just, to, just yeah. to add to that, um, there's a number of academic papers about multimodal interactions with robots. So, for any of you that are in the academia space with human robot interactions, um, that that's something that there's a fair amount of research. Uh, and as Justin was talking about, audio fingerprinting. Is, is just starting to become a little bit more accessible to developers, and I'm definitely interested in it. Uh, so if, if anybody wants to explore that together, uh, those, are, those are excellent conversations to have in the forums. Yep. Michael's got another question. Uh, it says, on a more technical level, how is Misty distinguishing between speech and just noise? Does Misty have uh, trouble detecting speech in more noisy environments where many people are speaking around the robot at the same time? So the, the comment, does Misty have more problems in noisy environments? The answer is yes. Um, what that, from personal experience, that vector, that degrees relative to the robot uh, is definitely going to come from the most loud and consistent voice relative to Misty. So, what I've noticed, and even even in the office, that if I'm sitting here having a conversation uh, with somebody else that's closer to the robot, that will come through more consistently than uh, you know ping ponging around like that noise vector does. Um, but if you're if you put Misty in the center of a room or a center of a round table and then have a, you know a normal lunchtime conversations that you might have, I, I would expect that it would have a significant amount of trouble focusing on one speaker. Uh, so, there's a bit yeah. of a follow-up from Philip. Um, I'm not sure that you'll be able to answer it, but it's like, he says, what's the signal-to-noise ratio in Misty's current release? I don't know exactly if Philip wants to expand on that question. It's the, there's, there's so many variables with, with that. So if you think about just any audio stream, you have like the proximity, the relative decibel value, um, and then you have the 
there, there's some optimization on the audio side with the microphone array to be able to try to focus on, on an individual speaker, which is what's going on in that uh, speaker uh, degree. So as far as signal to noise, I don't have a spec that, that, that we can share that says like, well, if a speaker is five meters away at, at, at 100 decibels, then the no, the, you, the, you will not overcome that without uh, another noise source at 20 meters. You know, I, I don't have a, a good spec for that. <laughs> Wu, uh, have, you had, have you encountered anything close? No. All right. I don't. But, um, yeah, Philip, maybe that's something you can post in community forum. We could try to look into it and understand what type of microphones we're using and, and maybe look that up. I'll just throw this out there, too. Whenever we say, like, hey, maybe post this in the community forum, it's not actually us being lazy. Uh, it's not us being like, well, we don't want to deal with it. It's actually that um, a lot more people look in there. Uh, some of the engineers who work on the specific things that you're asking about uh, look in there and, and can weigh in. And then also it becomes this resource for um, other people with the same question. So um, if we send it to the community site, don't feel like we're um, you know, begging off or something. We, we appreciate you, your posts there. Yeah. Th thanks, Philip. We really appreciate you, uh, you kind of being around and asking these types of questions because <laughs> it's super fascinating for us to dig into these as well. Um, and, and I realize for Alan, your, your comment about having issues with the, uh, with the upload and run there, if you have more than one JSON file in a folder or the area where you're trying to upload and run, uh, the robot, or at least the Visual Studio extension, doesn't know which one to pair with the JavaScript file. So as far as best practices using Visual Studio Code is to have a folder with each of your skills individually. So that way you only have one JavaScript file and one JSON file in each folder that you're working on at any given time. I expect that's what uh, that might make a, 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 a big change. He says that's what he does. So cool. maybe there, well, if maybe that's the there. case, then uh, you know we'll have to just jump on uh, a community forum thread and, and debug for you. Um, but mm -hmm. ha happy to happy to help figure that out for you. <laughs> so light question uh, evening tonight, uh, and someone must have a question. If not a question, post something about. Um, what you've been doing uh, with Misty, if you know, how long have you had your Misty? What sorts of things um, do you find exciting? Uh, request features, you know, there's all sorts of ways that we could interact on these on these calls. Yeah, or even uh, what you want to talk about. What next? Yeah. yeah, give us a topic of hey, I'd, I'd really like you to deep dive into this, and we'll uh, we'll prep on upcoming uplinks. We're also talking about doing uh, a series that's similar to Uplinks, but um, designed to uh, get people up and running uh, quickly with skills, kind of like a, a virtual uh, workshop, so to speak, but that um, we mean it to be more hands-on. We might have a, a goal uh, at the end of it, but you know, we might have those focused. I think we'll roll those out next month and kind of continue them going forward. So. If you have ideas on that, um, let us know that too. Yeah, Uplinks is, our intention is to be a little bit more informative and kind of have a variety of topics. Um, if, if there's something that is walkthrough related, tutorial related, we'll, we'll roll that into you know what Ben's talking about here. So if it, there's anything that you've struggled with or would like something like what we just went through in more detail, let us know. All right. Well, I, I think we we went through the events coming up. Mm -hmm. um, did we did we post the the links to those? We did not post the links to those events yet. Um, we could uh, find those and and I post can, them. I can, I can do a few of those oh, right now. And here. the release notes, uh, Jonathan just posted. Sweet. For any of you in the uh, Colorado area. Uh, come out for the SOLDERWORKS event. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, 
Uh, SolderWorks is kind of a co-working space for IoT, <clears throat> IoT companies. Uh, great, great group of folks. Um, it'll be a lot of fun for us to go and hang out with, with, uh, with the group there. So if you're around, it'd be great to see you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Michael says, just wanted to jump in and say that since I received my new Misty with the latest updates, I haven't had any issues with time of flight sensors. So that's awesome. Yay. We are aware of some uh, time of flight sensor issues. In many cases, it's not the sensors themselves, but the surrounding yeah. plastics or whatever else. But yeah, it's good to see that you're up and running. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and and for context, if, if you ever have any driving issues, uh, it, it's most like, you know, you drive forward and it stops, you try to turn, it doesn't turn, you drive backwards and it won't drive backwards. Any any of those things are generally related to the to the hazard system. Um, there's a number of posts in the community forum on how to mitigate that. Uh, and we're actively working on kind of, at this point, it's more tuning. When, when is too sensitive versus when might Misty actually drive off a table? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that'll just get better over time, but we, we'd like to know your situation and, and what you're dealing with. So don't hesitate to reach out for those. Um, Alan, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. These will be obviously posted so you can reflect later on. Philip uh, says, go for it, Ben. Oh, uh, I think it's for you, but um, Philip, we are meaning to send you the uh, you know .dot net uh, instructions and things. So if we haven't done that, we will get those to you uh, straight away. Yeah, Philip, I should have. Let me let me check here because I, I I thought that I had sent them to you, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll get you set up. If anyone else wants to try out the .dot net SDK, um, feel free to uh, ask us. It's going to work much much better for you if you are on a PC. Uh, it does, I don't know if there's any current path for uh, for a Mac to do it right now. Well, well, there is, but it requires boot camp and running yeah. Windows on your Mac. So I, I personally do that. It's not arduous just because I jump back and forth between Windows and, and OS X fairly regularly. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, it, Visual Studio for Mac doesn't enable some of the libraries that we need to, to, to run the C-sharp SDK. So. Just a current limitation. Cool. Well, I think we uh, got to every every question. And Jonathan's just sort of pointing out that after this release today, uh, within the next 24, 48 hours, uh, it'll be much easier to get up and running on the uh, .NET SDK. You won't have to um, install separate things right now. So, Yep. It's, it's pretty cool. Live live debugging on a skill on a robot is is definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, Philip, um, there is a a strange thing about VS twenty nineteen versus VS uh, two thousand seventeen. I don't know how it'll work, but we I mean, we should probably have an answer for that because I know that there was a reason why they were talking about twenty seventeen as. Um, yeah, so, it was. It was it was something with the window 10 windows 10 libraries um that either wasn't there or um yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah it could be just that we haven't tested it so philip you might be on the uh, <laughs> for some of that stuff awesome excellent thanks philip appreciate it wow all right all right well good stuff yeah thanks thanks everybody for joining um Again, community, that's what we're here for. Uh, if you if you want to see something in a future uplink, if you want to have somebody from the Misty team or somebody that's written a skill like on as a guest, let us know. If you want to be a guest, let me know. Uh, that'd be that'd be great. So thanks for joining. Yep. All right. So Next. we'll sign off and uh Oh, let's see. Thanks again for having these, Michael says. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, John. <laughs> All right. All right.